Hey everyone, so today we're going to be talking about the difference between a bohi and a boshi. So today we're going to be talking about the difference between a bohi and a boshi because they're two very similar terms with regards to Japanese swords, but they often get mixed up. And the, the problem with this is that they often get mixed up by sword resellers as well, which just contributes to the confusion that swordsmen and sword buyers have with regards to which one is which. So today I aim to clear up some of that um, confusion and also talk about the different functions of both the bohi and the boshi. So here we have my wakizashi here and let's talk about what a bohi is first. So if you can see this groove here then that is a bohi. So he literally means groove and bohi refers to this particularly wide groove and he would actually just be sufficient to name the groove. The bohi refers to the large one and so a b, b being the conjugation of he, refers to a much thinner groove. I'll pop up a picture over there. So this is the bohi. So what's the bohi? Because often resellers call this the bohi. This is not the bohi, this is a bohi. Not sure if the camera can see that, and I don't think it will, but where the hamon line transitions into the kisaki, so the hamon through the kisaki, that is actually called the boshi. And, you know, the Japanese sword, given its status in Japanese culture, every little bit of it has a name. If you can see a part of it where there's some transition, there's some difference to the surrounding part, then it definitely has a name. And so that's why this bit here, the hamon line through the kisaki, is called the boshi. Now, what is the purpose of the boshi? So the boshi being a hamon line there, there's probably not that much in with regards to the difference compared to the hamon itself. So there's a few different types of boshi where sometimes it goes straight through into the kisaki, sometimes it goes back, and it's all just about how the clay was applied to the sword when it was heat treated. Um, and whether they make much of a difference between the different types is a huge argument because some people say that it changes how much hardened steel you have at the tip and how the sword will spring. Honestly speaking, I don't think it makes that much of a difference and I don't think it is that big of a deal. I think it's mostly artistic. But what the boshi can tell you is whether the sword's been broken and had a new tip made. So back in the historical ages, then swords did break. It was a thing that happened and not everyone could just afford to buy a new sword. So sometimes the tip snapped off, and so rather than buying a new sword or leaving it like that, then they had a new tip ground into it. And there then you would see the boshi go straight and continue straight through the edge. And so it was a really easy, quick way to tell if the sword had had its tip broken off and then had it remade into another tip, rather than it being the natural tip where a boshi would come and curve because it was intentionally designed to follow the line of the kisaki. Now let's talk about the bohi and what the function of the bohi is. So the bohi is a groove that runs down the spine of the sword and it's often called a fuller or sometimes called a blood groove. So why is it called a blood groove? Well this refers to a myth that the the bohi sucks the blood out of the target and it's a myth that's understandable if you've ever seen a sword go into a living thing uh, or a knife of any type go into a living, living thing. Now I don't recommend stabbing anything, anyone, any animal with your sword, uh, but where there's a blood pressure because the heart is beating, then where the blade edge is, then it'll cause compression around the tissue there so it won't bleed as much. Whereas where this fuller is, then there's a gap where it can freely bleed and it'll bleed and it'll fill up this fuller and it'll run down it. Now, people say that, you know, therefore it's sucking out the blood. It's really not. It's just not stopping the bleeding like the edge is. Um, and it also doesn't contribute to how much the person, creature, whatever is bleeding because honestly speaking, most of the blood loss happens from being cut and having a giant gaping gash in the, the living creature. So this blood loss because of the bohi is virtually negligible compared to the blood loss compared to being cut. So it's not a blood groove for sucking that out, it's just a, a coincidence that happens because of the physiology of living creatures. Um, so what does it actually do? Well it lightens the blade. 
So having a large groove like this can lighten the blade by up to 100, even 200 grams while keeping it structurally strong. So if you imagine an I-beam, then an I-beam is much lighter than a rectangular block of steel, but it's still quite strong in comparison. And in the same way, then this one has a thickening at the spine and a thickening towards the edge side while thinning out the middle. So that way then in this dimension, then it's very strong because all of the forces are still aligned. And so then when you strike against something, then the forces will still keep the blade strong. However, you've removed quite a lot of material so that the blade is much lighter and you can adjust the balance of the blade. So I hope that cleared up a few misconceptions about a bohi and a boshi. So to recap, a bohi is the fuller, the groove in the sword and it's used to lighten and change the balance of the sword and the boshi is the area of the homon through the kisaki and it's mostly artistic. So I hope that was interesting and you learned something and with that I'll see you next time.